Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new H1Z1 PlayStation 4 tutorial. I'm going to go through my top pro tips on how you guys can get way better at H1Z1 in a really short space of time just by using a little bit more knowledge. Currently in PS4 I've got 29 wins, my highest kill win is 19. I think it's one of the highest kill wins in the game so so hopefully some of these tips will help you get more kills, get more win, just generally be better at the game and survive longer. If this video does help you guys, be sure to show some love to the like button. Let's go for 500 likes in this video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Really importantly, if you guys do subscribe, press the notification bell. Nowadays, YouTube doesn't really send out videos unless you've got notifications turned on, so be sure to hit that bell and subscribe, and I hope you do enjoy the video. So getting straight into it, tip number one, combat zone or practicing. If you guys are new to H1Z1, Go into combat zone. Um, combat zone is a really good place to practice your gun skill. You're only able to get a Hellfire SMG, the pistols, the shotguns, the AK and the AR. It's a really good place to practice your gunshot. It's a good place to work out what sensitivity is best for you. And honestly, spending as much time in combat zone as possible. It's something that every pro in H1Z1 does. They hop into combat zone and some of those pro players in the H1Z1 Pro League will literally spend hours a day in combat zone. Get into combat zone, learn all of the guns, learn how the, each gun works, try and figure out which guns are best and that is the best way that you're going to get a good shot in the game. Tip number two, use the best guns in the game. I'm going to tell you about a little hidden gem which I feel like a lot of you guys are sleeping on. There's a gun that I think a lot of people aren't using which is actually one of the best guns in the game which is the scout rifle. The scout rifle it might seem a little bit strange but I think it's way better than the M40. I think it's way better than most assault rifles in the game. The special thing about the scout rifle is it, you can two shot somebody to the head with it or three shot somebody to the head with it if they've got a tactical helmet. It's very very strong in the early parts of the game because you can two tap people with it. What you basically want to do is just aim for the head, shoot and then shoot again. The recoil reset is pretty fast so you can spray off a lot of shots and um, without a body armor it's about a four shot kill to the body. It is a very very strong weapon and I think it's something that a lot of people are definitely sleeping on. If you guys do watch my stream right here on YouTube I've been using the scout rifle so much and in my 19 kill win, I think about half of my kills were with the scout rifle itself. So definitely use that. The other best guns in the game that I'd recommend is try to run a KH-43. It's got really good recoil. It doesn't have too much bullet drop or too much bloom. And it's very, very good to use. It's very good for spraying people at close to medium range. And I think the KH-43 will serve you guys well. The MP7 or the CNQ SMG. This is all personal preference here. Some of you guys say the combat shot is best. And some of you guys say the um, SMG is best. I say just put it down to personal preference, definitely carry one of them close range weapons with you whether it be an MP7, CNQ, a shotgun or a combat shotgun. I think the best two are definitely the CNQ and the combat shotgun because the CNQ has got a decent fire rate and decent recoil and really good visibility with the red dot side and the combat shotgun shoots really really quickly so if you kind of whiff your shots you can uh, recover pretty easily. Depending on whether or not you take point blank fights or you take sort of medium range fights, use that to decide which gun you're going to take. And if Finally, the light machine gun is one of the best guns in the game for sure. It may well be the best gun in the game, it's got a 100 round clip and the recoil is very very good on it. So I would say guys, pick up that light machine gun. I thought it was pretty bad in the closed beta. They've definitely made some improvements to the light machine gun so be sure to pick that up. I think it is for sure. Definitely one of the top two best guns in the game. I was reading through the comment section of my last video um, with the H1Z1 Ultimate Guide. Somebody left me a comment saying that the Magnum can one shot somebody through a helmet to the head at close to medium range. I personally haven't had a chance to try this out, but I did want to include that into the video. Guys, try and use the Magnum, try to headshot somebody with it at close to medium range through their helmet, and it may be a one shot kill. And if you guys didn't know this already, the Magnum does 8% damage to cars, meaning that two full clips of a Magnum can pretty much fully destroy a car. So if you're trying to get rid of car 1Z1 and trying to stop people who are rushing you in cars all the time, spray them down with a Magnum. Maybe this gun could be the meta and we've completely overlooked it the whole time. Tip number three, strafe to adjust your aim. So it can be a little bit difficult um, with the sensitivity in H1Z1 to adjust your aim on targets. A really good tip is to strafe and adjust your aim that way. If you're finding it difficult to move R3 and adjust your target really easily, definitely if you need to make minor adjustments, just strafe and use that to adjust your aim. It's way easier than using R3. In fact, this is a tip that you can use in any FPS game in console, Call of Duty, um, Battlefield, whatever else you play. Strafing to adjust your aim is something people have been doing for a long time and it just makes it easier. It's like a very, very consistent way. And also whenever you're strafing, it makes it harder for people to hit you and stuff like that. It's always harder to shoot a moving target because whenever people are strafing, you you have to shoot in front of them to hit them. You don't really get destroyed as easily. Definitely strafing to adjust your aim is one of my top tips for sure. Number four, crouch. 
in the middle of a gunfight. So whenever you're uh, in the middle of a spray, you get a lot of vertical recoil with pretty much every weapon. What you should do is probably shoot off five or six bullets and then crouch, or a few bullets and crouch, because whenever you crouch, it brings your crosshair down automatically. So whenever you're getting vertical recoil, it'll push your crosshair up, but by crouching, you're bringing it back down. Also, it makes yourself a harder target. So if you're strafing and then you crouch and then you strafe some more, you're gonna make it really, really hard for people to hit you. Number five, the cop car head glitch. So if you guys don't know this, the cop car's got a really powerful head glitch on the police car light. It's extremely hard for people to hit your head or hit your body whenever you're behind the police light. So if you can get your car facing somebody sideways, and if you can just aim over the top of the light, it is extremely difficult for them. And it gives you probably the most powerful head glitch in the game, just because of how high the cop car is, and it's at a perfect level for you to head glitch. Definitely try to take those fights more often than, for example, just jumping out of your car in the open. Unless you know that you're going to kill the person, if you feel like you're against a good player, definitely use that head glitch to your advantage. Also using the top of the jeep can be very effective. It depends on what kind of angle you've got, but if you can step back from the jeep a few feet and aim over the top of that, it definitely can do wonders. Now this little tip's a little bit random, but it works both ways here. If you're behind a cop car and you're head glitching the cop car and they are hitting you, and you're behind the cop car trying to get some cover, make sure that you move behind the back tire before you start healing up. If you don't move behind the back tire, People can see your head through the window, or they can see your feet under the car. It makes it a lot easier for them to shoot you. So make sure to move behind the back tire. Another really cool tip is, if you move back far enough from the cop car, you can actually aim through the window at somebody else in the open. So if you want to get this like tiny little angle on them, you can actually move back from the cop car, so just start aiming through the small bit of the window, and you can hit some easy shots that way without them even knowing where it's coming from. Tip number six. Use grenades and throwables. Grenades and throwables in H1Z1 is absolutely huge. It's what you would it's one of the biggest separating factors from a pro player and a casual player. There are various different types of grenades that you can use for different types of situations. Let's just quickly go through them. Molotovs can be very good for dislodging an opponent if you know that they're behind a tree, behind their car, and you want to try and get them to move or something like that, or even just finish them off if they're weak. Molotovs are very, very useful. Likewise, if you're behind a tree and somebody throws a Molotov, throw down a smoke grenade, because a smoke grenade actually extinguishes molotovs. So if you're on fire, throw down a smoke grenade, it'll put you out. Definitely, it saved my life more than once. Using smoke grenades can also be good for tactical pushes and the end Using smoke grenades can be good for tactical pushes at the end of the safe zone, where you need to make it from A to B. If you're kind of finding yourself a little bit stuck and you don't have any cover to run, or if you don't have any cars or anything like that, using the smoke grenade will save your life a lot. Um, just sometimes you should just throw a couple down and lie down and heal inside the smoke. Like I said, molotovs can't penetrate the smoke. The only thing you have to worry about is people running you over or uh, throwing a frag grenade into the smoke. Sometimes it's a good idea to make kind of a screen with it and stand maybe like 10 or 12 feet back from the actual smoke itself to give you some visibility so that you're not actually physically inside the smoke grenade. Depending on the type of player, if it was me and I seen a smoke grenade, I would definitely chuck grenades into it or just drive through with a car. So maybe staying a little bit further back might help you. Uh, likewise, gas grenades can be used for cover. You cannot stand inside the gas grenade, obviously. If it's a last ditch effort and you really need cover, definitely chuck down a gas grenade a little bit in front of you. The gas grenade deals proximity damage. So whenever you're within a range of the gas grenade, it's gonna do damage to you. It'll take it off a little bit. So again, it's good for especially dislodging people in houses. If you've uh, hurt somebody, you know, if you've shot them three, four times, they've drove off, run inside a house, chuck in a gas grenade or two. It means they have to leave the house and it puts you at a big advantage whenever they're already weak. Uh, um, flashbangs are really useful. The only times I'd really recommend using flashbangs is if both of you don't have a car or something like that. Or if you're trying to push into a house and you know that the guy's uh, you know, waiting for you with a shotgun. Um, using a flashbang from car to car doesn't really work. It's kind of more from a car to tree or from car to house or like... Trying not to use it from too much range will definitely give you the most effect, but it does blind you for a good few seconds, and really there's no counter for it yet, so like I said guys, carry all of the throwables you can, always loot them, always pick them up, because they will save your life. Finally, frag grenades are a really big help in the game. You can just insta-kill people, um, you can blow people's cars up, I think that's probably the best use for them. You know, if somebody's head glitching their car, just chuck a grenade at their car and it, they'll either have to move, or the car's gonna get exploded. The same thing goes for explosive tips. They're a little bit slower, but using A tips and Magnum against cars will be uh, a good thing to blow them up. All right, number seven, running people over. So I've seen a lot of you guys on Reddit in the comment section on my live stream talking about not being able to run people over. So you'll drive straight through somebody and it'll basically just push them up in the air. Sometimes whenever you drive through somebody, it does work. If somebody is standing still, 
you want to just drive straight through them, it, it should kill them 9 out of 10 times. However, if somebody is running, you need to drive in front of them. So you basically, you're going to be trying to miss them with the cop car, but drive just right in front of them. Because the way like the server desync works and the lag works, is whenever you're driving in front of people, the servers may be picking them up in front of you. If any of you guys are old H1Z1 players, if you played Z1, and um, the old map, you guys will know about this. You have to drive directly in front of people whenever they're running to kill them with the car. Uh, tip number 8, shoot people's feet. If you guys checked out my ultimate guide video, I talked about this a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description. There's a way more in-depth set of tips in that video. So feel free to check that video out if you'd like. But once again, if you damage somebody, they're behind a car. Just take a look for their feet under the car. You can see it right beside the back tire normally. Or even if they're just taking cover in the middle of the car, it's extremely easy to shoot their feet. You can also see people's feet under bins, behind fences. You can see them everywhere. Just try and look for it. And honestly, if you shoot people's feet whenever they're weak and they're in the middle of putting on a med kit, you're probably going to kill them 9 out of 10 times. At tip number 9, bullet drop and bullet speed. So H1Z1 runs a projectile kind of system. It's not hit scan, if you guys know what that means. Um, you have to shoot ahead of people whenever they're running. And sometimes whenever they're at a further distance, you have to shoot above them. Now there's a few guns that you don't really have to worry about bullet drop with, which would be the likes of the AR-15's got extremely low bullet drop. I think like the one really good thing about the AR-15 is the lack of bullet drop it has. Um, up until really far distances, you don't really have to worry too much about it. If you're using like a scout rifle, if you're using like a scout rifle, a marauder and stuff like that, you will have to compensate for uh, bullet drop sometimes. I would say with the Marauder you don't have to worry too much about it because it actually has a free round burst which goes straight up vertically so even if you shoot right on people bullets are gonna land up above their head and it may hit them. Like I said there is some bloom in the game which means your bullets don't always go where you shoot or they're not always the same pattern so it is a little bit random but if you do notice that you're finding it really hard to hit people at range just try to aim a little bit above their head and you should be hitting more shots. This is especially with the M40 sniper and the scout rifle. You do have to work it out and aim a little bit above their head and and bullet speed, pretty much whenever somebody's running, the same with a cop car, you have to aim in front of them. You don't try to aim right on somebody, you have to aim, you know, just a little bit in front of them. We're not talking about too much here, depending on the distance, so you kind of have to try and calculate that if somebody's a little bit further away, you have to shoot more in front of them, because of the length of time that it takes for the bullet to reach them, and for the movement that they've made in that time, you do have to compensate for it a little bit. So if somebody is pretty close, and they're running to the side, pretty much just try and aim for the front of their face whenever they're running, or the front of their body. If somebody is a little bit further away, try to not aim on them at all, and just aim a little bit in front of them. Just kind of tap shoot until you actually start hitting them and then and then start strafing like I said earlier in the video strafe and shoot and that'll actually help you keep on track pretty easily or just move your joystick a little bit to keep adjusting and trying to shoot ahead of them. Number 10 seat swapping. This is something that doesn't work that well in the H1Z1 console but you can take people by surprise so if you're uh, in a car that's parked so you can't do it in a moving car don't try to do it when it's moving but whenever you're parked press x and you can swap seats and you actually have the ability to shoot out of the car. If somebody's kind of messing about driving about in circles or if you kind of just want to confuse your opponent you know, you can sit in the back of their car and wait for them when they're coming out of a building and just shoot them as they come out of the building from the back of the car. You can um, stop your car in the middle of a field whenever there's a bunch of cars about. Just kind of shoot cars as they drive by. People won't always know where the shots are coming from. And honestly, it's a good way to outplay your opponents. They won't really expect you to be there. It's also worth keeping in mind, if you're going to seat swap, you may have to jump out of your car at some point. So try to jump out of your car um, at the correct side that you can take cover from whoever's shooting you. So if somebody's shooting you from the left side of your car, try and jump out at the right and vice versa to make sure that you've got the best cover possible. Tip number 11, uh, jumping through windows. Once again, we covered this in the last video, but jumping through windows and jumping onto the roof and through the window can be a really amazing and funny way to outplay people. All you have to do is shoot the window out, run and jump through it. Um, my tips for jumping through windows is, whenever you're just about to get through the window, you need to stop at the sprint, kind of walk and jump through it. If you try to sprint through the window, you'll jump and hit the frame of the window. So whenever you're about to go through the window, uh, walk and jump through it, it's a lot easier. What you can actually do is park your car up to the garage of pretty much all of the residential houses, jump on top of the car and then jump onto the roof. And you can jump through the roof into the window or you can jump from the roof onto the umbrella at the back of the house and then jump from the umbrella on the back of the house into the window as well. It can be a really funny way of playing people. If you're trying to get away from people whenever you're damaged, just shooting at the window and jumping through it is a really quick getaway. And oftentimes you can completely lose people by just jumping through the window. Number 12, the bar and the fence. In the residential areas in H1Z1, if you have a look at the fence, there's a bar that comes out of the top of the fence. Whenever somebody's behind that bar, if you're trying to shoot down the fence and kill them, let's say for example somebody's taking cover behind a fence and you want to try and kill them, all you're going to do is basically look where their shadow is through the fence, aim at the bar on the top, and whenever the fence breaks, your shots are automatically going to hit the head because that's the perfect level to hit headshots. Likewise, whenever you're pre-firing people, which is a tip that I didn't really cover in this video, 
but I will try and cover it here a little bit. Pre-firing is super effective. Um, whenever you know that somebody's behind a tree, shooting them before you see them is a really good way to hit them just as they step out of cover. Um, like I said, the game's projectiles, so definitely pre-fire. One of the really good pre-fire abilities is to pre-fire that uh, area of the fence whenever people are about to pop out. So normally whenever somebody's behind the fence, you can see their gun poking through, you can see a black silhouette of them through the fence, and you'll see whenever they're about to come out. Just shoot that bar, pre-fire people while they're behind that fence, behind trees, behind a car, you know, just try and pre-fire people and you will automatically be hitting shots sometimes before they even get their gun up. And finally, just some tips and tricks for winning. My number one tip for winning and tip 13 of the video is take deep breaths if you start getting nervous at the end of the match. So when, whenever I recently got my 19 kilo in, I was so, so nervous at the end of the match. I, my hands were literally shaking. My heart was racing. It felt really, really tense. A few things that I done to keep calm was number one, take deep breaths. I've talked to you guys about this before. Any, a lot of sports people, just to keep themselves calm, will take huge deep breaths uh, just to try and compose themselves, lowers down your heart rate, stops you from shaking, makes you concentrate, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys do struggle from kind of like nervousness at the end of the match, or if you guys can't keep yourself together or make bad choices or something, just take deep breaths at the end. Don't uh, let yourself get overwhelmed. A really good tip for the end of the match is try to stay in the open and try to be aggressive and try and take people out instead of just trying to outlast people. Try and have a good idea of where people are in the final circle and, uh, you know, get some knowledge and try and get good positioning on them. Trying to get a good position like a formation of rocks on the edge of the circle is a perfect location, especially if it's a little bit of high ground, because you can basically see the whole circle. Um, you've got the high ground, you've got a formation of rocks, you're not stuck in the middle of the circle as well. So try and stick to the edges of the circle at the end, and try not to get pinched. If the gas is to your back, nobody can shoot you in the back, so you know that if you're going to get shot, it's from the front, left or right, it's not going to be behind you. If you use all of the tips I talked about in this video already, I think you guys should be ready to win, so... Honestly, just believe in yourself, you can do it, you will get a win, trust me, and just try and use everything in this video to your advantage, and you will already be automatically 100 times better than most players on H1Z1 and PlayStation 4. Well guys, that's it for my video, I hope you do enjoy it, thank you for watching another tutorial from me, like I said, and like I mentioned a few times, I got a 19 kill win yesterday. I'm going to leave a link to that video at the end of this video for you guys to check out if you want to. Also, I made a complete guide to H1Z1 on PlayStation 4 recently, so... Be sure to check out that video also if you do want to see that. Share this video with your friends if you do think that it will help them. And make sure to turn on notifications for the channel if you guys do want to be up to date with all the latest uh, news, gameplay, and info surrounding H1Z1 on PlayStation 4. One last thing, if you guys do get your first win from this video, I want you guys to send me a screenshot or let me know. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, there will be a link in the description down below. Feel free to hit me up and let me know what kind of wins you're getting and if this video did help you. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you guys spending the time here. But this has been Kingplus. Good luck and peace out. Drop it. It's okay to say that it's